Alright, so here we have a simple uh, physics problem where we have a ball being thrown horizontally with speed v from the top of a building of height h. Alright, so it's pretty simple. Let's draw our building here. Alright, so let's draw our building here. So say this is our building, right? And uh, here's some grass. Yeah, you know, right, because we have our building. That's not grass. There we go. We have some grass now. Alright, so now on the top of the building, we have, you know, Manuel standing on top of the building, and he throws some ball horizontally. Horizontally is very important, right? Um, he's throwing this ball, and it's going straight out, okay? As difficult as that might be to do, that's what's going on in this problem. That's what's being told to us. All right, so this ball's being thrown straight out. So that means already just from that beginning part, Manuel throws a ball horizontally. That means we can already say that the initial in the y direction is zero. It is zero because it's not from that at that exact moment when he's throwing the ball. Um, he's going perfectly horizontal. So this is the same kind of idea, you know, you throw something up in the air and it's going parabolic. When it reaches the vertex, there's only some horizontal velocity, okay? Same idea here, all right? So that means v uh, i x is equal to some, some velocity, okay? But we also know because there's nothing else happening to the ball, uh, the initial velocity is going to equal the final velocity only in the x direction. All right. So in the x direction, the initial velocity will be constant throughout the entire throughout the entire you know traversal of this ball. As it's moving from its initial point to its final point, the velocity in the x direction will remain constant. All right. So now let's check this out. So now it's going to be thrown and it's going to land or kind of follow this parabolic path, semi-parabolic path. All right, and it's telling us with some initial speed of v. So that's, we already covered that. That's the vix and vfx from the top of the building of height h. All right, so now let's go to this building of height h. So that means our distance here will be some height h, and that'll be given to us later on in this problem. All right, so the first part of this problem, we want to know, so the first part, we can call this part a, the first part of this problem we want to know the distance in the x direction. We want to know what that is, all right? So now, we already know that velocity in the x direction is going to be constant. So that means it's not going to speed up, slow down, nothing's going to happen. So that means we can just simply use the, the final part of this. We're going to be using velocity is equal to distance over time. Because velocity is constant, it's the only reason we can use it. So that means we're going to need to find velocity, OK? the horizontal velocity. And that's actually going to be given to us. It's telling us with some speed v. So horizontal velocity is going to be given to us. We're looking for d. So that last part, that last piece of the puzzle that we need is for how long will the ball be flying through the air? So that means we need to find time. Now time is the only thing that goes back and forth from the x direction and the y direction. So let's go ahead and try to find time in the y direction. All right, so now what do we know in the y direction? We are told, or we are actually given, that viy is equal to zero. We know that. That's awesome. All right, and then we know um, the distance traveled will be some height h. So that means distance initial in the y direction is some height h. It is some distance above the ground, which we will call zero. All right. So if it's going to be traveling downward, if it's already at at some height h and it's going to be traveling down, it's going to be decreasing. That means our gravity is going to be in the negative direction also. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, we know that. And anything else? Our V final? No, that's about all that's given to us. Um, our distance final, though, our uh, distance final in the y direction will be equal to zero because it will be landing on the ground. So we know distance initial, distance final, the initial and gravity. And that is awesome. Write this in pink because it's awesome. Uh, distance final in the y direction. We have this equation, distance final in the y direction, is equal to distance initial in the y direction plus 
uh, velocity initial in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. All right. So velocity in the y direction we already know. Let's do that in a different color. We already know that that is zero, right? Because he's just throwing it in the horizontal direction. We already covered that. So velocity in the y direction will be zero. Distance final is also zero. So we know zero is equal to, we can rewrite this equation now, d i y plus one half g t squared. And what we really care about here, as we mentioned before, is time. We need time. So let's uh, subtract the dy from both sides, diy, and this is going to be times 2, because we need to get rid of that 1 half there. So this will be this number times 2, divided by gravity. And that's going to be equal to t squared. So let's go ahead and get that squared over here, square root both sides. All right, and that'll just be equal to t. And this is the kind of the equation that we need right here to give us t. All right, so for our final part of this, because in part A, we only want to know this horizontal direction here, right? Or we just need to know this. That's all we want. Okay, and we already know uh, velocity is equal to d over t. All right, so velocity is equal to d over t. Now, we're going to solve for the t. Sorry, for the d. We know t, and we know velocity. So we're going to use this equation here. Uh, velocity times time is equal to distance. All right, and this will be the final part of the equation. These two guys put together. Now, in part B, we are given. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. All right, in part B, we are given some values. We are told that the velocity in the x direction, so v x is equal to 15 meters per second. All right, so we're given that. And then we're also given that the height that the ball is dropped or thrown from is 32 meters. So that means distance initial in the y direction is equal to 32. And velocity here, velocity x, is equal to 15. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll plug them in first, and then we'll plug them into our handy-dandy calculator. All right, so we have uh, 2 times negative the initial distance, negative 32, divided by negative 9.8. So these negatives, negatives will cancel out in our calculation, and let's see what that equals. All right, so we have 2 times 32, which is negative, all right, and that equals negative 64, of course, and divided by 9.8 negative. All right, so this is going to give us 6.5, some crazy number, and now we need the square root of this. So the square root of that number is 2.555. All right, so for all intents and purposes, we will write 2.56 seconds. All right, so that's our time here, and we can go ahead and plug this into this velocity equation up here. We know our velocity is 15 meters per second, so that's going to be 15 times 2.56. Let's plug that into the calculator as well. So that'll be 15 times 2.56. So our final answer, this is our distance, will be 38.4 meters. So that means if we scroll up here to the top, this distance here, so we have manual throwing the ball, this distance here, that it goes out from the building, okay, out from the building, is this number, 38.4 meters, all right? So now, for the final part, C is asking, if the above situation were to take place on the surface of the moon, where the acceleration due to gravity is only 1.6 g, so that means uh, gravity on the moon is equal to one-sixth the gravity on the Earth. All right, so this is going to equal one-sixth times negative 9.8. All right, we can plug that into our calculator really quick, see what that is. Uh, 9.8 divided by 6 is equal to 1.63. All right, so this is equal to... 
1.63 meters per second squared. Alright, so this is asking, if it is thrown on the moon, calculate the horizontal distance from the base of the lunar building that the ball lands. So, this is really kind of a stupid question, but they just want you to kind of play with gravity. So, our equation is going to be exactly the same. Nothing changes. So, we have our square root here, same as this guy over here. Uh, and it's going to be 2 times, the building is still negative 32. Alright, the only thing that changes is gravity, which is going to be, oh, that's negative, because we have negative 9.8, negative 1.63. Alright, so let's see what this is in the calculator. So we're going to have 2 times 32, 64, which will be divided by 1.63, which is also negative. Negatives will cancel out, 64 is positive, so 64 divided by 1.63 is 39 point whatever, and we want the square root of this, because there's a square root around all of that, uh, and that's going to give us this new time, so this is going to give us this new time of, what was that again? 6.266, so 6.26, uh, we'll call that 7, we'll round that up, 6.27 seconds. Alright, so that means we plug this in to our velocity times time equals distance, which will be uh, velocity in the horizontal direction is still 15, and our time is 6.27 seconds. Alright, so let's multiply these two together. So 15 times 6.27 gives us 94.05 meters. So this is our distance on the moon. This right here is distance on the moon. This over here is distance on Earth. So this is going to be D, E you want to call it that, and then this will be the distance on the moon. And this is the distance traveled in the horizontal direction. Alright, hope this helped you guys out, and good luck on your homework.